θέλει τίποτα άλλο. Έχω φέρει πολύ ωραία πορτοκάλια. Όχι, όχι, προτιμώ τα μήνα. Βάλω με το στομάχι, ε. Και εγώ όταν έχω διάρκεια, τρώω 5-6 μήλα και γίνομαι περνίκη. Λένε επίση ότι βοηθάει στο να έχει καλύτερη μνήμη. Αλλά ο κόσμο δεν τα αγοράζει. I'm Jimmy Demetro, and uh, uh, with me from the other side of the country uh, is my Hellenic Film Society colleague, Cosantina Konugres, and together we have uh, the pleasure of welcoming Christos Miku, uh, the director of uh, a much acclaimed film, uh, Apples, uh, which is about to be uh, released, uh, distributed in the United States by Cohen Media. Uh, Christo, welcome very much. Thank you for joining us uh, from Athens. Uh, thank you for inviting me. It's my oh, it's honor to be with you and it's my pleasure to, to discuss the film with you. Uh, uh, Christos uh, started, uh, uh, I think we, could, we can say, and you'll probably agree to this, that you're, you, you learned filmmaking on, on the set of other people's films. Uh, I think while you were uh, in your 20s, early 20s, you worked uh, with... Uh, 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 Lanthimos on uh, Dogtooth and uh, as uh, I believe second assistant director. You also worked with uh, more mainstream films uh, uh, such as uh, Renos Karalambidis uh, for Black Suits and uh, uh, Nikos Kuteliadakis' uh, Christmas Tango, which was a favorite of ours here in, in New York. And um, probably most significantly assistant director on um, Before Midnight. Uh, that was the uh, Richard Linklater film that was uh, filmed in, in Greece. Um, so, uh, and now you, you uh, suddenly you're making your own, your own films. Uh, your debut, uh, most auspicious debut film, uh, uh, Apples, premieres at the Venice Film Festival. Um, goes on to win, I, I think the last count I saw was some like 17 major awards at uh, international festivals, uh, unanimous acclaim uh, throughout the world, everywhere it's played. And now, as I said, it's being released in the United States. I know, doesn't anything exciting happen in your life? <laughs> it's been quite a ride, hasn't it? It uh, must be very, very gratifying uh, for you. Uh, the result of a lot of hard work though as well, I'm sure, I'm sure of that. I I'd like to begin with a, uh, with a, and, and a, to attempt a summary of, of what uh, Apples is about, but I, I have to be careful for two reasons. One, because uh, the film really hasn't been seen widely in New York yet. We don't want to spoil it uh, for uh, the viewers who will uh, be enjoying it. And secondly, uh, it's the kind of film that invites the audience to draw its own conclusions. And, and, I'm, and I must say, I, I've, I've looked through, uh, I've looked online, and I, I haven't found any summary that reflects my interpretation of the film. So I, I just don't know how to handle this. I, I, I've chosen my, I have to choose my words very, very carefully. Uh, it, it is uh, certainly an allegorical uh, comedy drama. Uh, it takes place uh, during a pandemic uh, that causes uh, amnesia. Uh, victims uh, who fall ill uh, lose their memory. And, um, the main character in the film, a middle-aged man, uh, played by uh, Iris Servatalis, uh, finds himself enrolled in a program uh, that's designed uh, to uh, have uh, to help amnesiacs build a new society, uh, a, a new identity, and uh, this is done by giving them uh, giving them uh, certain uh, chores to perform, commonplace chores, uh, which they record on camera and uh, begin to build new memories uh, that will uh, usher them into society. 
uh, once again. And I think that's all I'm going to say about the film. That's a good as far as the summary is concerned. Uh, uh, I'm trying to come up with one sentence that at least may reflect a little bit about my take on it. And I, and uh, I hope yours as well. Uh, we, we can say something about Aris maybe, that Aris, for example, uh, starts yeah. following this treatment uh, that the doctors uh, assign to him different exercises on a daily basis. Yeah. Uh, in order to build, as we said, a new identity, but maybe also for another reason. Let's yeah, say it's just exactly. that. <laughs> uh, it, what is it? I read somewhere and it makes sense to me. It's about manipulating, uh, what is it? Manipulating memory to ease pain. And, and, I, and I, kind of, I kind of like that. I like that very much. It comes a little bit closer to how I see the film. Anyway, it's, it's just a wonderful, wonderful viewing experience such a rich experience and uh, I, I must say uh, you are uh, it, it's it's an astonishing debut there's no it, it's got the kind of maturity and insight that you expect from a from a seasoned director uh, not from a young a young man uh, who's uh, at the helm for the first time it, it's really quite uh, quite remarkable congratulations job well done Thank you very much. Yeah. Congratulations, Christos. So why apples? Why is this the symbolic fruit for memory? Could you tell us a little bit about that symbolism? Yes, we call it apples for, or mila, as it is in Greek, uh, for actually for three different reasons. Uh, one is that um, apples, as I searched on the internet and I found somewhere, I mean, on a, on a website that Apples can improve your memory. Uh, this is a scientific fact, and uh, we use it in the movie. We're using it in the film, uh, as we saw in that clip. And in general, I, it is something that um, uh, that it helps us with the uh, with the story of the film. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it's a film that uh, I wrote it uh, for my father. Uh, when I was dealing uh, with his loss and my father used to eat a lot of apples. He was eating around to seven to eight apples per day. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and he had a very, very strong memory. So uh, that's the second reason. And then the third reason is that somehow I believe that uh, as a society in general, we, uh, at the moment, we are storing our data more in devices and not in our uh, uh, memory, in our mind. So we're not having our memories in our mind anymore, but we are putting our memories in um, in here. And so- yeah. Which is uh, curiously called Apple as well, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> and exactly. So it's an irony about how we put our memories in up, uh, products from Actually, Apple company. Yeah. That, that leads me to ask you something I was interested in, and, and you may have answered it already, why you chose to uh, set the film in the recent past rather than the present. Uh, uh, there are no cell phones in this film. Uh, there, are no, uh, uh, there are no computers. Uh, people use Polaroid cameras and they, they uh, play cassette recordings. Uh, why the, uh, uh, the avoidance of? Uh, I think you may have you may have indicated first, why in your last. First, uh, first of all, we wanted to give this nostalgic approach uh, in the film in general. So we are using elements from the whole previous century, and um, uh, we used items that are almost forgotten at the moment, as we said, like Polaroid cameras or uh, old tape cassettes or even. Um, handwritten letters that people are not using anymore. Or, and uh, the other thing is that uh, I, I believe that the extensive use of technology has made our brain a little bit lazier. As for example, in order to imagine that in order to go from one place to the other, we're always using Google Maps, even if we know how to go or how. Uh, and uh, we are not using our mind anymore a lot and our memories a lot. And uh, that's why we want it to create a world that is more analog. And uh, it's a little bit like, what if uh, the movie was taking place in a world like that? So I, I, it, it, then it works very nicely into, I think uh, one of the basic premises of the film is, is dealing with your memories. How do you deal with them? 
uh, do you do you let them go? It seems to me that it's easier to let go of a memory uh, than to hold on to it, particularly if it's not if it's not the kind of pleasant memory you want to to uh, uh, hold on to. But it's very important that that one do, that one do that. Uh, I think that's one of the messages of the film. Uh, 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 just about every every promotional uh, piece I've seen about the film uh, categorizes it as uh, being an example of the Greek weird wave, and uh, while I, I think there's uh, uh, there's certainly an abstract aesthetic to the film, and and I think that in uh, you know it it does have this kind of deadpan sensibility uh, that we associate with the weird wave, but I think your film differs in a very, very important way uh, in that uh, there's an unmistakable humanity at the core of the film, uh, which is uh, usually not the case with the typical weird wave of film. So I was wondering, does that label, does that category mean anything to you? Uh, uh, do, you do you see it as a weird wave film uh, or is it just a meaningless, uh, a meaningless term to you? It's a lazy work from journalists, to be honest. On this. <laughs> I mean, uh, they don't know how to enroll. Well, because, for example, for us, my references and also my references that I, I gave to uh, the crew and the members that we, the crew members that we got together, uh, were films like um, Charlie Kaufman stories or The Truman Show, which was the movie that made me to want to be a filmmaker, or even Kaurismaki, uh, and we used Kaurismaki and Roy Anderson a little bit for the deadpan humor. Uh, but as you said, we are trying to make something that has a very, um, I mean, the difference between Naples and I think the difference between Naples and the movies that somehow belong in this way is uh, what you said. It's the, that we try to do something tender when the other films are trying to prove that life is more cynical. So um, I don't know. And, and of course, that, that is helped immensely by your choice of uh, actor for the lead role. I was going to say. Uh, that Vitalis is just an incredible actor. You, you can't help but watch every, everything he does, uh, the body language. He, he acts with his body. And he's a very, very sympathetic character to just uh, embrace and, and follow. You feel, you feel the pain uh, that he feels. Uh, it, it's just a lovely, lovely... Uh, lovely film and a very clever choice of actor uh, to play that uh, to play that role. Could you tell us a little bit more about the casting process with Aris or Vitellis? Uh, yes, with Aris we worked together in the short film that I made uh, before Apples. Uh, I have made only one short film and uh, we agreed to work together uh, also in the feature film. So mm -hmm. we started writing, writing the script um, with him in our mind, with my co-writer. And we knew exactly what he could do because Harris uh, is a person that uses, is an actor that uses great his uh, body language, as you said, uh, Jimmy. And he's somebody that um, um, can be very funny, but also at the same time, very, uh, very deep. 
Uh, and uh, at the beginning, when we started doing some rehearsals, I asked him to watch some movies of Zach Tati and two oh. movies with uh, Jim Carrey, um, The Truman so Show. So basically comedy, uh, comic, uh, yes. both, both Carrey and Tati, of course. Uh, of course. Comedy. And two, two movies of Jim Carrey, um, uh, the Truman Show and the Tenants and Sign of the Spotless Mind, and somehow to combine mm -hmm. two different approaches in one and to create something that is more, uh, it's more physical, but at the same time, um, it can be really tender and uh, deep. Uh, and that was the idea, and that's how we worked. Uh, I mean, later we worked, of course, with many improvisations and many things that uh, we knew that he can do. Uh, in order to approach this. And also, we try to do something that has a very minimalistic approach. Uh, I mean. You know, you see the film and you just you just can't help thinking it's the perfect match between actor and director. And uh, it, it just, it's a, it's a, it's a cooperative effort that's working brilliantly. And it adds to the excitement of, of the experience of watching the film. Uh, very, very much so. Very much he's, so. He's a great collaborator for sure. I mean, he's, yeah, he's, he's a great he actor. I was going to ask, so Kate Blanchett is an executive producer of Apples, and she's also the producer of your upcoming film, Fingernails. Could you tell us a little bit more about your relationship with Kate? Uh, yes, with Kate, we met in Venice in 2020 when uh, the movie premiered there uh, in the festival because Kate was in the jury of uh, the main competition and we were the opening film of Horizonte of the second competition in Venice. And... Um, I received before the first screening of Apples, I received the message that Kate wants to have breakfast with me. Uh, and I was like, why? I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I immediately said, okay, I will go for I breakfast. I assume you, uh, you, you uh, ran, not walked. <laughs> yes, and uh, no, I, I, I mean, that I, I went for, yes, we went and uh, we had a great time there and we started discussing about films in life and we realized how much uh, we both like the same things. And uh, um, then she asked me to be to play in the next film, uh, but we didn't have a role at that time. So we decided to that uh, she wanted also to produce the next film and to promote Apples, the executive producer on Apples. Uh, and we agreed on that. And since then we are talking very often and we are having a great collaboration. I mean, yeah, it's wonderful when wonderful. an established figure, uh, a quality uh, uh, performer uh, and figure in the cinema uh, recognizes young talent and does more than just uh, just recognize, actually becomes involved in helping and making sure that, that things move along for that. And it's, it's, it's just a wonderful thing. It's heartwarming that uh, uh, that is happening. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen that, that often. But again, it's a tribute to you because you you have that quality product uh, that uh, she, being who she is, recognized and uh, and uh, decided uh, this was worthy of her attention. Uh, it, it's, uh, no, Kate is really great, and she uh, she loves cinema. I mean, she really loves cinema, and she's looking always for new talents. We're discussing. I mean, also when I'm finding something new, I'm sending to her, and uh, we're always discussing and. Um, no, I really, I really love her taste. Not because she liked apples, but because I mean, it has a great taste. Well, Christo, it seems to me that you're obviously on, at the beginnings of an international career as a filmmaker, uh, very much like Lantimos, who has left Greece uh, to uh, to do his projects. How do you tend to follow? Do you think you're going to be following that path? Do you see yourself going back to Greece? Uh, or uh, is this now a, a broader, a broader opportunity has opened for you, and you know, you're going to obviously pursue that? Uh, um, for me, the most important, and always, it goes, and I feel very lucky with Apples that because Apples was sold in seventy countries. I think it's the, the Greek movie that it was sold in more countries ever, uh, oh, yeah. and. Um, uh, what I always care is the audience and how we can make movies that will be, because that's why we're making films. We're making films in order to be seen by, by the audience. And I think that if I can have the chance to continue making films 
uh, with well-known actors in English that uh, this will be more accessible for the audience and more people will have the chance to watch it because you know how a Greek movie cannot work in the same way, um, then I will try to continue making that's that. So the serious problems, in, uh, the lack of audience in Greece uh, for local product. Uh, that is not, only, not only in Greece, I mean worldwide, when there is something that is only a Greek product, it's very difficult to sell it. It's very difficult uh, that the audience will follow that film. So uh, if I can make uh, films in, like right now we're trying to, to make fingernails i mean we will shoot it very soon so uh yes i i want to continue i have already plans for after fingernails for another film we're also preparing a tv series so uh, we'll see. now i believe you you're a co-writer on fingernails as well correct you, you yes my... yes i i co-wrote it with uh, stavros raptis uh, the same co-writer who had been uh, uh, Apples and uh, also a UK playwright, Sam Steiner is his name. Uh -huh. And uh, we co wrote it, the three of us. Um, yes. And uh, the plan is to shoot it in November. We're starting the shooting. And you're shooting uh, in, in here in the United States or Great Britain? Yes, Where in the United States, probably, okay. or Canada. We haven't decided yet. I mean, yes. next week we will decide it. Uh, but in the United States or Canada, yes, that's the plan. And it's uh, Jesse Buckley and Riz Ahmed are the two main actors. Nice. Uh, it, it, do you want to talk a little bit about the plot of that or, or would you rather not? Uh, I, I can say a few things. It's a, it's a movie, it's a little bit like a, a companion piece to Apples as a film. I mean, because again, we're creating a world. Uh, where people and society is struggling to find love again, as there is a test that it was discovered that could give uh, an answer to a couple if they are in love or not. And a lot of people, a lot of couples did that and they failed and there is a love crisis. And that's the beginning of the story. I see. Um, uh, yeah. But yes, it's again, it's again something, it's a comment on our society and it's something very personal in a way, as it was also with Apples, because also Apples was a personal story that I tried to transfer it in something universal. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, I said, started from the moment that I lost my father and I was trying to deal with this loss and I was trying to understand many, many questions around how our memory functions and how our memory, if our memory is selective and how you can erase something that hurts you and move on in your life. So, um, yes, I'm, I'm always trying to think when I'm writing ideas about how we can, uh, yes, we can uh, analyze a little bit life or start asking questions about uh, life. Well, uh, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it when it's done. And, and uh, uh, again, I, uh, I think, uh, uh, you are a, 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 a compelling filmmaker and you will continue to turn out product that uh, we're going to want to see and uh, enjoy. Uh, do you much. want to give us an overview of uh, where the Greek film scene is today uh, in Greece? Uh, Greece has become suddenly uh, the, the place for uh, outsiders to come into uh, the country and uh, film all sorts of tax advantages and and uh, incentives to, to draw uh, filmmakers to Greece, and certainly very good for the for the crew members who will be employed constantly. Um, what kind of an effect is that going to have? Do you think on Greek filmmakers? Uh, is it beneficial to them as well, uh, or are they still struggling uh, as they were before the uh, before all these okay. incentives were in place? How how it, does it continue to be as difficult? Uh, in Greece to make a film, for Greek to make a film? Uh, to be honest, I, I, I don't have a very specific answer on that. I, I mean, I don't know how it will uh, go. For example, the previous years, the last decade, we know that we had many difficulties here in order to make a film. For example, when we applied in the Greek Film Center uh, for the Greek Film Fund, I yeah. mean, to, uh, with Apples, uh, we had the reply after three years. So for three years, we were waiting just for a reply. Uh, that was the case in the past. Right now, 
it goes much better from what I know. Uh, and they are giving replies much earlier, the Greek Film Center, and it works in a more normal way. But at the same time, I think that um, so many crews are working, uh, crew members are working in the foreign productions that are coming. And I don't know if this is helpful, first of all, I don't know how easy then they can go and work in a Greek film that has less money. Mm-hmm. That's one question. And the other question is at the same time, um, they will not, for example, in the summer, it's, I, I, I'm hearing that it's almost impossible to find uh, uh, crew members from Greece. Crew members. Just, uh, the- because all of them, they are working in the foreign productions that are coming to shoot here. Um, so I think that these are two things that are a little bit making maybe more difficult to make a film, especially uh, from spring until uh, autumn. I think that maybe you can shoot a film here only in December or uh, in, in general in the winter when nobody's coming to shoot. Mm. Uh, or I, I really don't know how it will affect, but it's true that the, ha- the last, since we started, I don't remember uh, many Greek films that actually have been made or they have done something really good in terms of uh, sales or festivals worldwide. Uh, well, I, I I want to thank you very much for your time, Christo. I, Kostadin, I don't know if you have anything else you would like to uh, ask uh, Christo. Or... Christos, it's so lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much for all your collaboration with us. This has been a wonderful interview. Thank and, you very much and, for inviting and, uh, me. Congratulations, our sincere congratulations. congratulations. Uh, and uh, please know that, uh, uh, at least I'm confident that there is an audience for your film, uh, people who are, are able to see it and, uh, and appreciate it. Uh, it's certainly a worthy, a worthy, a worthwhile uh, viewing experience. And uh, I thank you for creating it. And I thank you for I... your time uh, today. Uh, to help us introduce the film to our audience here in the United States. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. And I hope, yes, that the audience will go to theaters, not only for, for Apples, but in general, because we need that. Yeah. We need to return to theaters and we need Absolutely. to start watching again films uh, there, because that's the, the place that we should watch films first. Uh, and, and let's hope they go to something other than Top Gun this week. <laughs> of course, of course, I hope, I hope. Even if Top Gun, they're saying that it's not a bad thing, but yes. No, I, I hope that they... But, you know, it's, 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 it's for a different audience. Okay, I thank you very, very much and best of luck to you in the future. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah.